five five taking four oh five five. Yeah, I just had a couple of questions um, because you talked about what turbulent times the sixties were, and particularly we're looking at years like say sixty five to sixty eight. You know, by sixty eight things really build to an absolute chaotic head, and you weren't out there. You know, maybe you know raising a fist against the war and really violent, but you were within American society. Disruption, everything from the colleges being closed down and Martin Luther King being assassinated and the cities are burning. How did that make you feel? Was it frightening? Can you remember your feelings at the time? Because you said now you feel that, you know, you see that those extremes were necessary. Do you remember your feelings at the time? Was it frightening? Did it seem as though things were a bit out of control? And if you didn't answer your question, Kurt, just say During that time, uh, when all the turbulence was taking place in the late 60s, I think inwardly I was quite pleased, even though it was very hard times. I felt pleased because this had to happen in order for myself, for me to grow. Uh, I didn't, I didn't totally internalize all of this. Uh, the Martin Luther King, uh, the the burning. I, I can remember when Los Angeles, uh, in that particular area where they had so much turmoil, uh, that happened in somebody else's neighborhood. But I understood why it was going on. It's it. It was kind of a, f a feeling that possibly freedom would happen for all of us, including myself. So inwardly, I was glad that it was taking place. Now, I didn't want to see people hurt, and I didn't want to see the fires and, and, and what have you. But it was like, I don't blame them. I understand that. And the women have a right to feeling as they are feeling. Possibly something good will come out of this. And I think that's what I was pleased about. Not that it was happening and that people were getting hurt, but that change possibly would take place. I had enough presence of mind to know that it does take extremes to move a little. And that was, at that time, there were extremes taking place. When you looked at society in those days, and we're talking in the 65, 66 era, or right around in there, and you saw the counterculture, quote unquote, what did you think of them? How did they appear to you? Well, I wasn't necessarily around it. My lifestyle, uh, the counterculture that I think you're referring to, they weren't flying as stewardesses. You know what I'm saying? We were kind of the cute little Mary Janes, <laughs> walking up and down aisles with our high heels. So we weren't really a part of that. Um, I didn't feel a part of them, but yet when I would listen to their arguments, there were a lot of, aha, you're right, <laughs> for myself. Like what? There are a lot of unequal things in this working place in particular. There are a lot of unequal things in our personal lives. Uh, yes, I do have a valid point of view, and yes, I do have a mind, and yes, I have a right to use it. And they were saying these things. They were saying it was okay to feel that way. And they were saying it much louder than I could ever say it to my husband. <laughs> they were saying it to the male passengers that we had on board our flights. So there was a total consciousness, a total awareness taking place throughout the entire country at the same time because we were all reading the same newspapers. We were all watching the same TV stations. So it wasn't just females getting this information. The United States was getting this information. So it was a point of conversation when you went out with another couple. You talked about it. How do you feel about it? And you would hear the other husband complained that he does not like this part of his wife and his wife 
complained that she did not like that part of her husband, and her, their complaints were the same as mine, or the same as my husband's. And then we'd at some point laugh about it because it wasn't that heavy. I mean, you, we were living it, but you got through it, and you accepted it. That's the way life is. That's on the political part, and that's very interesting. But on the social level, um, this sense of free love that's going on. Now, I know you didn't participate in it, but you were watching it, you were, and that your, your experience and your observations are valid. The things like free love uh, that you heard about, the, uh, the growing one's hair long, these self-expression, means of self-expression, how did they occur to you for somebody who was locked into a very different world? Well, they, those that had the long hair and the earring uh, were rather, what is the word I want to use, uh, bohemian. And I love to talk to them. I love their way of thinking. I was, in many respects, envious of their freedom of expression. I was entirely too inhibited to do that, too restricted. Not only because I felt um, my job restricted me, my interior restricted me because I, that, was just, that was just counter to how I was brought up. But it was so refreshing and it was so fascinating to me that I would have my eyes wide open and my mouth open and I would just love to talk to them. I'd love to be around them did not necessarily want to duplicate their lifestyle because I didn't have the guts to do it. But I truly appreciated where they were. We're kind of glad that, that they were around with that expression. And I found them fascinating, but I was not a part of it. Any stories that you remember and all the times that you were flying, of running into counterculture types, hippies, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, anything that occurred? Did you see the look on other passengers' faces? And more in the early days, anything that you recall as an experience that you might have had, where you, could, you know, actually ran into this, oh my God, this is a different thing. I think I can recall, uh, in particular, a young man I dated. And I think the reason why I dated him was because he was absolutely the most different type of person I'd ever dated before in my life. And we would walk into a restaurant, and of course I was always dressed more in the fashion world, and, and he, he could have cared less. It was so unimportant. And I remember the looks of people as we would walk into a restaurant. And I would think to myself, they are judging him very unfairly because he is very bright, very charming, and I thought to myself, they are giving me, um, they're wondering why I'm with him, because I was dressed straight. And I, th I guess that's when I, you know, it dawns on you at some point in time that we do judge people on how they dress or how they look, knowing nothing else about them. They're usually, and I shouldn't generalize like this, but I have a feeling anyway that they're more honest. Uh, but this guy that you were with, how did he look? He looked like a hippie. He had long hair and he had an earring in one of his ears. And his clothes were certainly not out of gentleman's quarterly. <laughs> uh, but there was a charm to him. There was a freedom that was so attractive that I never had. I still don't have it. It was just very attractive because he was free. He was not encumbered by all of this, you know, what society had placed on, on me. And he was, he was fun. He allowed me to be free, I suppose, which is why I enjoyed going out with him. We've 
Well, the negative legacies of the 60s were very pronounced. In my job, I couldn't get married. I couldn't have a baby in my job. But since then, I think Barbara's question is really yeah. more, more, now today, looking back, you know, there's some things in, about the 60s that, that we regret, or we should regret, or we, or we should be different now. It's 1991 when people are seeing this. As you look at the 60s now, is there anything that, 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 that came out of the 60s that we shouldn't be happy about? That we should not be happy about. Yeah, yeah, things that maybe went too far, or changes that actually became destructive, or some parts of society that were dismantled. You know, I'd say that the freedom of entities was great, but maybe that the questioning of authority, the complete dismantling of, of any kind of structure. You know, do you feel that there are any sort of downsides to the changes that happened, or was it all just a positive release for society? No, there were there were quite a few negative things I believe that happened in the '60s. Um, how can we be proud of the Vietnam War? Uh, as we look back on it, we wanted the freedom to voice that we didn't like the war, but yet we were in it. Uh, the killing of a president. Uh, the turbulence at the time were refreshing, but they were also kind of destructive. Uh, I can re I can remember long hair and the uh, everybody being so unhappy if their son had long hair. Well, that's not to be proud of. I mean, that was not a, a, a particularly good time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything today that you regret about the sixties? Now, looking back on. No, I don't. I don't regret anything of the 60s. Only because I'd, it'd be regretting life, and, and it had to happen that way. It had to be that way. Uh, we were a different group of people then than we are today. We're not... And there are many things that we can be sorry that we no longer have from the 60s either. Um, I loved the prices of cars back then. <laughs> uh, but there are many, there are a few things in the 60s that were hurtful, were not helpful. I'm trying to think of something in particular. In a, in a single line of thought, I get the sense that, that here I was working as a, as a, um, a flight attendant at this time. Um, and I knew that things were not right, you know, I mean, things, we weren't being treated correctly. Your consciousness about the women's movement, getting, all of a sudden, getting this sense that, that hey, I, it doesn't have to be like this. And that feeling that it, that it gave you, the feeling that it gave you to start talking about these issues with other women is something I'd like to capture, okay? Um, so I'll start you off on a baseline of, 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 you know, being a flight attendant in reality was, was not the most you know, liberating experience for a woman. But, you know, with the consciousness of, of the women's movement coming along, it's the journey I'm looking for, more than anything, Joanna. The journey that you made for yourself and how it, how it felt to make that journey. And I know it didn't happen in just a brief amount of time. No, it didn't. It kind of evolved. Uh-huh. Well, tell me, t just tell me a statement that we were, uh, uh, an idea that we were working on before, and you, you, you told me, and I'm going to incorporate it now, the sense that what the reality of being a flight attendant, or in this case a stewardess, really was, and how it made you feel. The reality of being a stewardess, gosh, I don't know, guys, I've lost it. <laughs> was it... Was it the liberating experience that you hoped it would be? And if not, why? Don't worry about what you said before at all. I think you want something that I can't give to you. No, no, you gave it to me already, in a sense. Oh. You, you had talked to me about it being, being a, a job which had a lot more restrictions on it, a lot more confining, you know, here, here's your place as a woman. 
being a stewardess at that time, you did know your place as a woman. Uh, your place as a woman was to be pretty, was to be gracious, was to be social, but you didn't have to be too bright. And my tardy mouth <laughs> used to get me in a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> uh, it was fun to zing. Uh, you'd get the comment, I can remember when I hit it uh, in my late 20s, a passenger saying to me, for instance, and how long have you been flying? Because obviously I wasn't 20. I was 28. And I can remember saying, oh, eight years. And looking at him and saying, and how long have you been with your job? And of course, he was a man of about 60. And he did not, he thought that, I, I could see that he was not pleased with my question back. It, there was a liberty that one could take asking a stewardess anything they wanted to. That, that's still kind of today. But in a sense, it was even more so then because we were the fly girls. We were um, used to all. Uh, they could not hurt our feelings. Um, it hasn't totally changed. But in your own consciousness, when things changed, how did they change? What did you see happening out there? I mean, this woman's movement. I, I saw the uh, stewardesses at the time making changes. Uh, they were no longer content in being in a box. They, in fact, were rebelling against many of the things that management was dictating. They, in fact, were rebelling against the traditional uh, lifestyle that they grew up in as a, as a young girl and were now saying, that's not what I want today. They, in fact, were not only verbalizing it, they were now acting it out. Some took more extremes than others. Uh, some fought it with greater degree than others. But in all, we all shared this in common. We would all sit around initially and talk together our feelings on well why are we thought like this is it ever possible for us to become a vice president of this company uh, why are we not being paid the same amount and we also knew which is off the subject that if we were feeling this way we had many black counterparts that we were particularly felt sorry for because they even had it harder than we did so there was that element thrown into it that the, that the equal rights brought out all segments of inequality. And of course, I, I flew with several black flight attendants that were mavericks. They were the first flight attendants in the sky, period. So they had a double whammy. They had a double degree that they were fighting against. Was this all connected to the women's movement? I think it was. I think, uh, yes, I think that there was a connection with the women's movement and, and the repression of the blacks. Uh, there was an awareness that things weren't good. They weren't fair. They weren't equal. There had to be changes. Uh, I, too, would have burned my community. That's how you make change. And I, 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 you know, am certainly not um, a terrorist. <laughs> but I think you have to sometimes do the extremes in order to see some moderation. At the time, we were an extreme. Our job was an extreme. Uh, nurses had it very much the same way. They, if you wanted credibility, you only talked to the doctor. If you want credibility about a flight, you talk to the pilot. I mean, what's this female know? Uh, when we would tell a passenger why we had a delay, unless they heard it from the captain, they really didn't believe us. We're dumb. You know, we're just this dumb little female. It was very much more pronounced then. Now, what did it feel like for you when you started to get together with, with other women and talk about these issues? And, I want to know, was it a good feeling? Was it a feeling of, thank God, there's, you know, I don't feel this just by myself. That feeling of starting to get together to, to, to feel a sense of empowerment. Well, I think what women felt 
And what I, in particular, was feeling was that I was not alone, that I wasn't the only one going home and, in fact, taking a second look at my husband saying, you know, I think I have the short end of the stick here. Uh, I have a right to talk. I have a right in a conversation when there's a group of us. My viewpoint is just as valid as yours. I think we were willing to stand up and get get slugged, slug it out if necessary to make our point known. Because we shared that amongst ourselves, that probably gave us the encouragement to continue on on that path, that we weren't alone. We were all feeling it. I, in particular, felt it. And I made sure that my husband knew I was feeling it. He wasn't, he, he could n no longer expect me to be as his mother was with his father. Because I wasn't going to do that. I wanted more. It didn't make for harmony. But it did make for change. How did that realize itself? Now that you're feeling it, now that you know you can change things, how did it do? What, what effect did, did it actually produce? Back then? Yeah. How did you start to realize this? How did it manifest itself? It manifested itself by making me somewhat of an angry person. It made me angry. Uh, it very possibly could have put a chip on my shoulder. Uh, I didn't necessarily uh, follow the rules as I always had in the past. It was, it was kind of liberating to know that I could speak out on it. And I knew that I had lost 50% uh, of the people listening to me if they were men. But I had also gained an aha <laughs> from the women that were in the room when we spoke about it. So there was a lot of anger. It was. It had to go to that extreme level. Uh, there was an edge, and the edge was felt by all. I don't. Th I don't think that society realized that it was just the tip of the iceberg. That it was just starting to mushroom. I had an aunt that was very liberated, that had worked all of her her life, and was very active in female organizations. And we, even though she was a generation older than I, had much in common. She could relate to me the unfairness of life throughout, and I could view it from today's point of view, or at that time, in the late 60s, early 70s. What changes did you make? What changes did you make on your job? What changes did you make in your life? Well, I've kind of gone full circle, so it's hard to go. <laughs> I think the biggest change that I made was not being agreeable with men on a topic. If I didn't agree, I said I didn't agree. Uh, I felt that I had every right to my opinion even though it was not a popular opinion. In regards to my job, I think that our only recourse in verbalizing it was through our union. On an individual basis, our supervisors were women. So they understood where we were coming from. They weren't able to change it, but I think they understood it. Most of them were ex flight attendants or stewardesses. Mm -hmm. So there was a definite uh, understanding. Uh, I can remember um, a lady that used to be a head of uh, the domicile. At that time, she would always try and get one of her superiors, if he were a man, to put her point across if it were important. Because she knew that if she presented the idea in a form of a board meeting, it would have been turned down. And she needed to have the male point of view, or the male giving her point of view, and therefore it could be accepted. But it's not much different today. 
I know you don't want to hear that, but it really isn't. <laughs> Go to a bank. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not what I want to hear. It's not what I yeah. don't want to hear. Actually, it's the way it is. Yeah. How, how about that, though? As we think about our show, six uh, legacies, things, how far have we come? I mean, did you ever think of yourself as a feminist? I mean, that's, that's one last question I have for you for that. I mean, if you'd have thought back in the 50s and the early 60s that you were going to grow up and, and espouse... The, the feminist kind of ideas. Would you have surprised yourself by the late 60s with where you had come? Yes. <laughs> uh, I never want, I never particularly liked labels. Um, partic in particular, extreme labels. And being a feminist at that time was a label, and it was an extreme label. And it didn't conjure up uh, fuzzies. It, you, you immediately thought of this kind of witchy looking woman with her hand like this, her fist raised. So I never wanted to think of myself as a feminist. I think what we did, or at least I did, is that we softened it with our femininity, but we espoused to the same cry. But we just kind of put a little femininity to it and packaged it a little bit differently than what we were seeing possibly on TV, or at, at least I did. That was, that was too crass, that was too hard. Uh, I agree in what you're saying, but the manner in which you're saying it, let's, let's try and make it a little softer. And I'm not sure that that hasn't continued. <laughs> Where have we come? It's, it's, we're talking about our show six stuff now. Where have Looking back on those days, looking back on, on the actions you took, are we, where you, are we now where you want to be? Are you where you want to be, first of all? Do you feel like you have come a distance? And if so, did the 60s play a role in that? I know what I want to say. I don't know if you want to hear it. I think I've come, uh, I think I've come far. Uh, I have a new husband. He's not new, it's many years, but I mean, it's a different husband from the 60s. Uh, and I think being divorced during that time was part of it. Um, my husband now of 16 years, uh, I, I no longer, ha I don't have to fight for what I am. I have to tell you, I'm still doing the female jobs at home in addition to uh, working just as hard. Kind of tired of fighting for those things. It's just easier to do them. And yet he's my present husband, uh, future husband, I don't want to make it sound like that, um, is a lot different than I think he was when he was 22. Uh, he's very capable of cooking. He's very capable of cleaning. Uh, he knows when I get home and I'm tired, and he knows I'm really tired, he will pitch in and do it. My father wouldn't even know how to do that. So yes, we have come a long ways, and yet we really haven't, we don't have utopia, and there, not that there ever will be. I think today that a woman is very productive on the job, very responsible on the job, and she gets home, and she is still wife and mother. And I think she's still going home and making sure that she has done the grocery shopping, she's making sure that there is food on the table, and she's making sure that the house is clean. Mm -hmm. Did the 60s play a role in your mind in, in the changes that have taken place? And if so, in what way did they? How did the 60s motivate? The 60s prepared me, us, for today. Uh, the, and I can only judge that by looking at my mother. My mother is a much more dependent person, always has been. She was not required to be independent. She was discouraged from it. Consequently, in her older years, 
she falls very easy into that dependency of my father. I doubt that I or my generation will do that. I think that we will be viewed more as an equal. We have certainly carried the responsibility of being an equal. And I think man, men have found us to be good partners. And I think once you get around to realizing it, we really do work quite well together. We don't need labels. Uh, the 60 prepared us for that. Uh, they were hard, turbulent times. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they prepared us for the 2000s. Our children are not being raised as I was raised. They're much more aware. Uh, they, a little girl does not, she would be a doctor. I would encourage my my daughter to be a pilot over a flight attendant. I would encourage my daughter to be a doctor or a lawyer, possibly even a fireman. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, and it's okay. And you don't lose your femininity by being a, in a typical male job. There is no such thing as a male job today. And yet I read in the paper and it says that women are wanting to get into the boys club. And I really think to myself, who wants to get into the boys club? You know, maybe we have to go to the extreme. I don't think we've done that yet. We're kind of in the middle. We'll probably still have to hit the extremes yet. Do we have any seconds here for time? Yeah, we're going to have silence. <clears throat> Can you be quiet for a 30 second. seconds.